Hey everybody, Kelly Ritchie here. I wanted to take some time this evening and uh, make a recording and touch on some things that um, I see as repetitive issues with students. Little things like tuning your guitar. Often if I'm doing a Skype lesson, um, we dive into a guitar lesson, I'll ask a student to play something and the guitar's out of tune. Um, it's critical the second you pick up your guitar, that that's the first thing you do, is tune. And I remember when I was first learning how to tune, I'd grown up playing the piano, I had a well-developed ear, but I had to learn to listen on my guitar uh, because the timbre between the different strings, because you know some are wound and some of them are not wound, the bassier strings. So there's some things that I just wanna point out. Uh, I happen to be, and drop detuning, so I'm gonna take advantage of uh, talking about this tuning, then putting it back in standard tuning. Also, one thing that I do is I watch the jewelry that I have on, especially for the style that I play. If you'll notice, I never have anything on my right hand. I always take my pinky ring off, uh, and I always wear my peace ring. I've had that for a long time. And uh, it's a solid gold piece ring, and there's a story behind it, but that's another, <laughs> that's for another lesson. Um, so I have an app on my iPhone, and it looks like a, a Boss Chromatic Tuner. And uh, I don't want to get the light glare on here, but it's just, um, it says Chromatic Tuner on it, and it looks like a little Boss foot stomp pedal. And it's really good. I also discovered recently that Alexa, which is sitting right behind my shoulder, uh, will give me uh, guitar uh, pitches so I can tune my guitar. So that's cool. But with a guitar tuner that has um, a needle on it, that way you can see if you're sharp or flat. Now, there's some tricks to tuning. Uh, one, you want things to be quiet so you can hear. And you want to let the string fully ring. So I usually pick the string with my thumb because I don't want the attack of a pick. I want a good fat sound and I'll make sure all the other strings are quiet. And I don't want to hit it so hard that it pulls it out of tune like Wah. and see how I'm taking my thumb and just falling off of that string down to the next string. I'm not doing that just Then I'm watching the needle and if it were uh, sharp I'd want to come under the note and back up to it because if you just pull down sometimes the the string just physically can slip so you want to make sure that you tune up and that the sometimes I'll push some of the tension out so it's up and it's and it's locked in tune Now I can check with the harmonic because at the 12th fret, the harmonic is an octave higher. And sometimes that frequency cuts through. Okay, now uh, when I put it up in standard tune here in a minute, I'll uh, show you how the harmonics work from string to string. Now I'm in a drop D. All of my strings are in standard tuning, except this used to be an E string. I tuned it down a whole step, which is two frets. So like here's an E, E flat, D. So two frets down is a whole step, and that goes from an E string down to a D. So I can hear that's just a little bit off. When I use harmonics, there's a, it, it will be like a, it, if it's perfectly even wave, if it's a flat wave, then it's in tune. But if there's fluctuation, that means it's out of tune. So,
one cool thing about a drop D uh, bar chord is just a straight line. At least on these top three strings, my fourth, fifth, and sixth strings. Because that used to be my power chord, but the string has been tuned down two frets, so I've got to move this up two frets to compensate for it being tuned down two frets. And you can take your D form, and as you move it up, you can let that D string open as a drone. Here, my first finger is on the fifth fret as I move that form up. And my pinky here, let me switch over here to this camera angle. My pinky here is covering because that note isn't. That note sounds okay. But mainly, I just want I don't let it overtake things, my high E string, I'm okay. But if I did this in slow motion, I'm constantly getting in touch with that string to kind of mute it out so it doesn't, so I can keep the momentum going, but just kind of dampen this a little bit. Also, every time I touch this bottom string, my hand knows how far away everything is. So I'm constantly, there's a lot of uh, finish <laughs> off of all my guitars. Well, if they have a pit guard on them, it's not. Let me put it over here on this where it's... It's a fun tuning to play with. I get out of drop D, I'll just let you know that there's um, a few songs in the classroom you might want to try. Feeling Under has a drop D. heavy driving song. So if you like that drop D sound, um, you can check that out in the classroom. Drop D is a lot of fun. Um, I'll do a lot of ambient stuff with it where I turn on uh, ping pong delays. Uh, I have a looper uh, built into my pedal board. I also have my pedal board synced when I'm in the studio to my Ableton Live, so any loop or beat that I pull up, it will trigger my looper, which is a Pigtronics, to remain in tune. So if I, you know, have a beat that I'm playing to and I'm uh, recording a track, then everything's gonna sync, sync up mm -hmm. that I, you know, put on that looper. So that's a, a different lesson that I, I wanna start getting into a number of things that I do in the